Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. That first verse, keep us steadfast in your word. Curb those who by deceit or sword would wrest your kingdom from your son and bring to naught all he has done. A few years ago, I was speaking with a lady who I've known for probably the whole 11 years I've been out at the other church. And this lady brought a young girl with her that she had been helping. And while the young girl was doing something else, the lady and I had this short conversation. And then she turned to me and asked, what kind of God would send this child to hell? You see, this young girl was not a Christian, but of another faith. And this is the question that you and I ask, especially when we co-mingle in the world. We run across people that are not of the Christian faith. And we probably struggle with that question at times. The question we might need to ask is who are we to ask such a question? Or is, is it our right to ask God that question? Or maybe is that the right question? Or maybe better yet, does, does God really want someone to be condemned to hell? Or in other words, cast from his presence? Because think about it. If we think God would condemn someone to hell, what are we saying about God? We want in our lives to be happy. We want to have joy and fulfillment in our lives. And a lot of times when, this, when we run into these circumstances and that question maybe is brought to us, <laughs> it doesn't really bring happiness to us. The Bible tells us God does delight in life. In the beginning, the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. And in John, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And we see the joy of what God has done in Christ in John 10. I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus died to give you life. Jesus rose again to life. To give us life in the spirit. The Lord and giver of life. In Romans 6, we were buried before with Christ by baptism into his death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. And right down to the last chapter of the Bible, Revelation 22, the spirit and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who wishes Take the free gift of the water of life. At this baptismal fount, the Holy Spirit does pour out life for you. 
at this table when we celebrate Holy Communion. The resurrected Christ feeds us with his own living self. He is everlasting life. At this pulpit, the Father speaks into your heart new life. What is God's good pleasure that we would have life? It is his pleasure that we would have life. So why some and not others? Why at times do some feel dead inside? Why do some go to hell? A never-ending death. Does death bring God pleasure? Never. So why? People chase after their own pleasures. What makes you happy? What makes you fulfilled? Our society is filled with it. You deserve a break today. Um, Nike, just do it. You name the slogan, it's out there. You're the important one. (laughs) The Lord says in Ezekiel 18.30, Turn from all your transgressions. Iniquity, sin will be your ruin. God designed us for life. Created us in his image. In the image of God. His life overflows with self-giving love. And that's what he wants for us. Life. And a life that's overflowing with self-giving love. But that self that overflowing of self-giving love does not earn us salvation. But we live to please ourselves. Look at our country. I mean, seriously, I had never thought in my life the things that are going on right now and the things that are said would be said were like this. One side blames the other. The other side blames the other. Yeah, it's just, it's it's a mess. And should it surprise us? Because if you really look down to the heart of it, it's selfish. It's selfishness. Looking inward. It doesn't matter which side you're on. It's the same selfishness that's in our world. Self-giving, self-serving inward thinking. And that, those desires that we want to fulfill ourselves, those desires, when conceived, give birth to sin. And sin brings death. God made a plan. He gave Christ the authority... But just, just as the Pharisees are questioning Jesus, but who gave you this authority? We still do it today. And we have to acknowledge it's happening today. That's the hard part for us. Because we're told to love our enemies. It's hard not to lash out those that do not think Jesus has the authority. But he has been given the authority, and he will take vengeance. We don't need to. We don't need to worry about that. Our desire should be that self-giving love. We are redeemed by Christ. We have received the Holy Spirit by the waters of baptism. 
we continually eat his body and blood to sustain us, to keep us in the faith, that he will be with us, to keep us in body and soul until he comes again. And we continue to hear his word, both the law of what we failed in or didn't do, and the sweet honey of the gospel that says, you are forgiven, you are my child. That young girl probably will never know what happens to her. But this text is just reminding me, it's about authority. Who has the authority? Most people believe there is a God. But then it somehow goes off the rails and starts going inward. Just as Adam and Eve wanted to be like God, same happens today. Surely, what kind of a God would, would condemn this young girl to hell? He doesn't. He doesn't. Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world. I came to set it free. That you would be free in Christ. That you would be forgiven. That you would not have to be under that yoke. My yoke is easy. Why don't people come? Good question. <laughs> Because it's not that difficult. It's just acknowledging that Jesus Christ is a son of God sent into the world to save us. It's not about us living sinless lives. Because if it was, no one would be saved. But what is it about is following Christ and striving. I won't use the word try, but striving that he is our king. He is our prophet, priest, and king. And when we fail, we come to him on his knees, on our knees to him. Begging for his forgiveness because we know what we deserve. But we acknowledge that he has been given the authority by God the Father. And he is working in us through the word by his Holy Spirit. Our Father has created us out of love to be his children. Created us to be with him forever. That is heaven. We don't question that authority as Christians. We don't question how the Holy Spirit works in our baptism. Or his body and blood to sustain us in the faith. Or how the word calls us to himself. In the beginning, Satan tempted Adam and Eve. I actually have it down here, Eve and Adam. I don't think it matters which, which goes first. Tempted them, and they ate the forbidden fruit. You got, see, you got to remember that Adam didn't put up a fight. He just ate it. He just took it and ate it. He knew it wasn't supposed to. So you can't blame Eve. And the church leaders in Jesus' time kept questioning Jesus' authority. Adam and Eve questioned God's. 
Jesus has been given the authority by the Father. Jesus calls us to himself through the word of God, through the gospel. Calls us by baptism into Christ. Baptized by his Holy Spirit. And daily we need to remember we are baptized into his death. Which means there's going to be some suffering. But I would rather suffer now with Jesus as my prophet, priest, and king than be separated for all eternity from Jesus. Repent of your sins and let Jesus heal you. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. No one has access to the Father except through the Son. The Father wants everybody to be saved. But not all will take his gift of grace. Some will question it. And will continue to question the authority of Jesus, of who he is. But that does not stop us from proclaiming. From letting the spirit work in others. Jesus has healed you. He has forgiven you of all your sins. The spirit and the bride say, come. See, a lot of people are afraid of Revelation, the book of Revelation. (laughs) This is the last chapter. Come and let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Our Lord and Jesus Christ, who has been given the authority, has called you by the gospel. And you have answered that call. In about a week, there will be a new Bible study starting before church. Before, yeah, before church. Revive. What does our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have in store for this place? Who is he calling to himself? Think about that for next week. Amen.